Long time ago, I promised a Fallout 4 video where I would have shared my personal selected mod list. However, many complications arose and I couldn't get this video halfway into production phase. And also because I wanted to stay away from Fallout 4 mod content because I don't really have fond memories of it. But it will seem that no matter how much you decide to stray away from something that you started your career with, it will always find a way to come back at you. So why not? After all, why shouldn't I make a modding tutorial? It's the thing I promised since I started the channel after all. But before we even dare to start the journey, allow me to disclose something for you young and intrepid new modders. Modding Fallout 4 is a Calvarian ordeal. You will spend more time dragging plugins around, patching mods, trying to make the download bar to fucking work, and watching how long tutorial videos than playing the goddamn game. Sometimes the hard work you spent entire weeks, if not months on, will just crumble on top of you and you'll have to restart from the beginning all over again. My greatest suggestion will be fixing the billions of bug Bethesda left and just playing the game vanilla as God intended. But I am not here to demoralize you into not mudding your game. The point of this series might be to show you how I modified my game to make it more fun to play. In my opinion at least. But it should also be seen as something to introduce you to what made me a good modder. This series should inspire you to start your own mod list. Of course, we cannot start having fun without going through the the most boring part first, learning how to do shit. You cannot simply just jump on Nexus, download your favorite mod and drag it into the data folder. I mean, you could, but good luck with whatever happens afterwards, you're on your own. We are building a house here, we start from the foundation. And what better way to begin our construction with a guide specifically created to introduce new people into modding Fallout 4, the Midnight Ride. This guide will teach you everything on how to properly mod your game, how to revert it back to old gen and how to set up a new use the tool that allows us to, well, organize our mods. Mod Organizer 2. Mod Organizer 2, but I already got Vortex. No! Fuck Vortex! It's a shit program that doesn't work! Uninstall it along with all the mods you already had, uninstall the game, uninstall Steam, burn down your PC, and start over! Mod Organizer 2, despite looking so confusing from the unexperienced eye, is far more clean and easy to use than Vorsex. In comparison, Mod Organizer allows for mods to be safely installed and uninstalled thanks to the Virtual, virtual File, file System which creates a virtual folder where the game reads the mod you install. Amateur allows for easy conflict resolutions and mod management thanks to the plugins tab. And you can even create multiple profiles with different mod setups. Vortex, on the other hand, extends its diseased roots all the way into your game's files and fucks everything up. Long story short, running Amateur is like being chromed up to the core in Cyberpunk. Running Vortex is like giving your game third stage cancer. Close the mod manager question, we can now focus on the rest of the midnight ride. Follow it step by step since the beginning, don't leave anything behind. Even reading the introduction is mandatory. Oh, and don't use Wabajack, I guess. Fuck Wabajack. WAIT! Before you proceed to the extended version of the Mina Ride, which is also a good addition and I'm running all of the mods within it, except targeted textures and the content section, I suggest you go down to the description and check out this load order advice for separators. Credits to the one and only Mr. Numbers 3 k give it an applause, some kudos, some endorsements, take him, fucking take Take him, take him. A load order is basically the hierarchy system for plugins. The lower a plugin is on the mod list, the higher is its priority. If you have a plugin that has a higher number than another, that plugin is going to take priority on the other plugin with a lower number, meaning that lower plugins are going to override plugins above them. This load order advice, that again I stole from Mr. Numbers 3K on Nexus, is an excellent example on how a proper, well-organized load order should look like. You don't want a load order with plugins all over the place. Trust me, I know by experience. If there are some things in the Midnight Ride Extended I will suggest you to skip, it's only the context section. Some of the mods in this section are incompatible with some weapon overhauls and replacers I have installed. And also because it's almost useless, who in their life wants to be with the Minuteman? So now, you have followed the whole guide and completed the extended finish. All you have left is these little creatures down here. These are not to be underestimated and should be read carefully too. This section will explain which tools to avoid, which mods to avoid, the facts, and the scariest one, the resources. This might be the most important parts of this guide. This section contains all the facts and logics to destroy all the bullshit that the modding community of Elder Scrolls and Fallout titles have been spraying over the years, and a guide on how to install and use the best tool ever made for modding ever. Xedit. Xedit is the salvation of creation modders. Sure, it may look like undecipherable nonsense once you open it, but after a while that you start getting the hang of it from common usage, and trust me, you are going to use it a lot. You get used to it. 
I, I don't even see the code. All I see is Big Jack of Robot Doodles. This is the tool that allows you to solve conflicts and overhaul mods as you see fit. You want that weapon to have a different name? No problem. Copy as an override into an ESP flag as ESL or click in the original weapon's name if you're a maverick. Well, bam. Swedish fish. Of course, this is just a bastardization of how Xedit works. Xedit allows you to do more than just renaming and changing stats on weapons. It's also a way to solve conflicts between mods. For example, oh no, this health rebalance mod somehow conflicts with my custom race and now I cannot play as a BBW Argonian. We are simply going to, again, copy the overwritten mod as an override, preferably in an ESP flag as an ESL, drag the part from the other mod that should remain unaltered, save the plug and place it under the mask that's overriding and now it works it just works once you get a hang of Xedit, you're going to be able to make all sorts of stuff for your own entertainment. Like for example this AK-50 I made with Xedit alone for shits and giggles. What I like to do is to always keep a modding roadmap behind as I playtest my game to remind me what needs to be rebalanced and later tweak whatever stats I feel are too overpowered. Like this Casador armor here that gives you plus 10 endurance, plus 5 charisma and has an under armor with 50 damage resistance that can be suited with railroad ballistic weave modifications. For fuck's sake, what's going on in the mind of modders? Fair and balanced my ass, every mod is just the perfect item that you're going to stick to for the entire game. Fuck you, give me a reason to use this over that and that over this. Now, you tried so hard and got so far, but this is just an introduction to what modding has to offer. There is a lot more coming towards you. Remember to join modding communities to rompere le palle alla gente per le varie cazzate che non funzionano and asking more experienced modders for help with various tools. Woo, a lot of work to do and we didn't even start it. I wish there was more in this video than just me saying BREED! But really this is all that there is to it. Mining is about learning along the way, about running over obstacles and finding how to pull jump over them. Now go out there mining and make me proud. Uh, does this model work for Xbox? What the fuck is an Xbox?